Number 10. The Bull Geoglyph Archaeologists with the Russian Academy of Sciences found a mysterious geoglyph in the Republic of Tuva. The Republic of Tuva is near the Russian border with Mongolia. The discovery was part of a burial from the Bronze Age over 4,000 years ago. It depicts a bull crafted by very carefully placed stones. Only part of it is still visible today because road construction back in the 1940s erased its head and torso. Archaeologists only found part of its backside, its hind legs, and its tail. The bull geoglyph was made by a Central Asian culture that lived in the area. What's really unique about it is that archaeologists usually find petroglyphs, meaning pictures carved into rocks. They almost never find geoglyphs depicting bulls. The difference being that geoglyphs are made three-dimensionally from rocks. We don't know who made the picture of the bull, why it was so important to them, or what other kinds of ancient pieces of artwork they may have left behind. But this is a remarkable discovery in and of itself. It's just a shame that the construction destroyed part of this window into history. Number 9. Folded Iron Sword Archaeologists in Greece have found an iron sword that is over 1600 years old. The sword, crafted of iron and folded over itself, was likely used in a ritual killing before being dumped in the grave of a soldier with the Roman Imperial Army. Researchers with Aristotle University of Thessaloniki were astonished by the discovery because the soldier was buried in a church, yet the sword was part of a pagan ritual. Even more mysterious is the fact that the soldier was likely a mercenary who had embraced the Roman way of life, adopting the Christian religion, yet never abandoning his pagan roots. He was buried in an ancient basilica, which itself was built over an older site of worship. The original Christian church here was from the 4th century, perhaps the oldest one in the entire Greek city. By the 7th century, the church had suffered too much damage and was abandoned. It was left to crumble into a ruin with seven graves sealed inside. But all the other graves were kind of boring compared to the Roman warrior with his folded straight sword. Experts say these kinds of swords were used by auxiliary cavalry forces. This suggests the dead man was probably an officer in the Roman army or a Roman mercenary. But Romans didn't practice folding swords before burying them with the dead. This was a custom practiced by the Celts, the ancient Greeks, and the Vikings. This fact has left archaeologists stumped because they have no idea where the soldier came from. He was clearly part of the Roman army, yet his customs came from very far away. Number 8. Egyptian Gold Jewelry on the European island of Cyprus, archaeologists found a mysterious stash of gold jewelry from the days of the Egyptian pharaoh Nefertiti. They found at least 500 rare objects, as well as 150 human skeletons throughout two tombs from the Bronze Age. This was in the ancient city of Hala Sultan Teke, with the dead and their artifacts dating back over 3,000 years. There were few discoveries that made these tombs unusual. For example, the skeletons were found in layers on top of one another, showing that several generations of people had been buried in the same tomb. Because all of these generations were buried equipped with gold jewelry, from necklaces to tiaras, the excavators believe they were all part of the same elite family. They may even have had parties down here in the darkness of the tombs to honor their dead. According to Professor Peter Fisher, his team found a ceramic bowl that had once been filled with wine. At one end was an opening to drink from, while the other end was for filling with liquid. But the weird discoveries don't stop here. They found cuneiform inscriptions from Mesopotamia. The inscriptions mentioned three different names. One, a god called Amuru, and the other two were the names of Mesopotamian kings. Researchers still can't figure out why artifacts from Mesopotamia, nearly 1,000 miles away, were buried in a tomb on the island of Cyprus. What do you think? Perhaps a political alliance or marriage led to this cross-cultural burial, or something else. Let me know your theories in the comments. Number 7. Stone Balls A collection of mysterious stone balls was discovered on a very remote Scottish island. The balls were shaped nearly 6,000 years ago and may have been used as weapons. They were found inside an ancient tomb on the island of Sanday, about as far north in Scotland as you can get. And yet, these aren't the only ones. Hundreds of similar stone balls have been found in various Neolithic sites across the country. Each one is roughly the size of a baseball. 
They've even been discovered as far away as Ireland and Norway. The oldest was found in 1860, carved ornately like a piece of art, but not all of them are carved so nicely. Some are studded like mace heads and others are polished smooth like cannonballs. Nobody knows what these balls were used for. Some archaeologists say they were weapons, others say they were for artistic purposes. The weapon theory has the balls being wound with rope and then thrown at enemies. But the archaeologists who lean the other way say the balls were used to signify somebody's status in their community. Quite the difference. The thing to remember is that making these balls would have been very difficult thousands of years ago. They couldn't sand smoothly using sandpaper. They had to use actual sand and water to make a rock into a perfectly circular object. Because of this, they would have been rare things to have and require extensive labor and expertise to make. This definitely lends some weight to the theory that they were symbols of wealth or status. Number 6. Fossils from a Prehistoric Rainforest In southeastern Australia, a man named Nigel McGrath was working in his fields with his farm equipment when he noticed something strange. The rocks that were always getting in the way of his equipment had preserved fossils visible on their exteriors. He did a bit of poking around and realized there were fossils on all of the rocks in the area as if someone had stamped dead insects onto them. The farmer's field, an area about the size of a football field, is now known to contain the most shocking record of life in an ancient rainforest. It's especially shocking because this part of Australia is about as far from being a rainforest as you can get. Yet up until about 5 million years ago, Australia was an even more lush rainforest than the Amazon is today. Paleontologists have found spiders fossilized so perfectly that they can literally see the impression of their leg hairs on the rock. Fossilized fish are still bloated with their bellies full of food, and leaves are preserved in such incredible detail that researchers can actually see the pores they used millions of years ago to absorb CO2. But why are all these fossils so amazingly preserved? They are arguably the best in the world. Matthew McCurry from the Australian Museum Research Institute believes it was a freak accident that caused all these critters to be perfectly preserved. Iron ions from nearby basalt deposits dissolved into the water of a lake that once stood here. Then, a sudden supply of highly oxygenated water entered the lake through a flood and mixed with the iron ions. The iron dissolved rapidly and formed something called geothite on the lake bed, which rapidly replaced the soft tissue of whatever animals had recently fallen to the bottom of the lake. And this is probably why we now have an amazing snapshot of life in an Australian rainforest from millions of years ago. Number 5. Warrior's Personal Toolkit 3,000 years ago, there was an epic battle along the banks of the Tolense River in Germany. At least 140 fighters died here, and one of them dropped something very personal. The fallen soldier dropped his toolkit a small packet which contained a soldier's must-have tools along with a handful of bronze pieces of scrap. You might think archaeologists have found tons of evidence of prehistoric battles throughout Europe, but that's not actually the case. Europe in the Bronze Age was relatively peaceful, heavy on relatively, and most of what we know comes from written records or the ruins of settlements. The bones and scattered weapons of the 140 fighters dead alongside the river are the only archaeological evidence we have of an actual battle fought in prehistoric Europe. That's what makes this guy's toolkit so fascinating and mysterious. The thing is, Bronze Age Europeans couldn't write. There are no records to tell us who these people were fighting on the river. We don't know why they fought. We don't even know who won the battle. The only clues we have are in their bones and their personal belongings. The ancient toolkit contained a bronze knife, a chisel, some small ingots, and scraps. What was all this stuff used for? Probably for trade. The individual probably kept all the scrap pieces of bronze he could find to either trade or recycle into other things. And this was before Europeans used coins. Ingots and chunks of scrap were the main currency. What do you think a soldier could have purchased in exchange for a solid chunk of bronze 3,000 years ago? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 4. Medieval Cistercian Monastery The Furnace Abbey in Cumbria was founded in the 12th century as one of the richest monasteries anywhere in England. A team of researchers from Oxford Archaeology North recently excavated this medieval abbey. 
only to discover the remains of an unidentified abbot and his mysterious staff. The abbot was between 40 and 50 when he died and had been laid to rest in the holiest part of the church, the place which held the high altar. He was discovered buried with the silver head of a ceremonial crook or a fancy staff. It was the first of its kind to be found in England in over 50 years, suggesting the abbot was someone of great importance and status and yet nobody can figure out his identity. The staff is honestly quite incredible. Its head is decorated with discs that show the angel Saint Michael fighting a dragon. The foot of the staff is iron, and its pole is painted wood. The unknown abbot would have looked quite impressive, like a figure from a fantasy novel almost, while holding a staff this unusual and ornate. Number 3. Petra's Idols in Jordan's ancient city of Petra, archaeologists have stumbled upon a unique set of stone idols. For those who don't know, Petra was once the very heart of the Middle East. It was a hub for politics, culture, and commerce. It began as a humble trading post for the Nabataeans. These people became rich beyond their wildest dreams, but the neighboring states became jealous and invaded. The Nabataeans were finally wiped out by the Romans in 106 AD, and Petra was left in ruins. The newly found stone idols are fascinating because they give a glimpse into the lives of the Nabataeans. Archaeologists believe the idols depict deities worshipped by the desert dwellers many years before mainstream religions emerged. But what's truly fascinating is that the deities are all female. There's the goddess Alat, the goddess Al-Uzza, and the goddess of fate, Manat. These goddesses were worshipped at great shrines and temples in Petra. But sadly, very little of their history remains today. Between the Romans destroying the city, an earthquake decimating it after that, and centuries of looters, it's a miracle these three idols survived. And while we know the Nabataeans worshipped a pantheon of female goddesses, we don't know what significance each one had. Number 2. Siberian Valley of the Kings New discoveries in the Siberian Valley of the Kings have left archaeologists stunned. Excavations by a team of Polish and Russian researchers have uncovered more evidence of the Scythian civilization that lived in the Eurasian steppes and southern Russia beginning in the 9th century BC. The team found two previously unseen burial mounds inside an ancient necropolis. The first mound contained the body of a woman in her 50s and the skeleton of a child. They were buried with a handful of interesting objects, from gold ornaments to iron knives, moon-shaped jewelry to fragments of arrow shafts. It's a fascinating mystery because the Scythians didn't leave a whole lot behind. There is not much that scientists have discovered to explain their belief system, their cultural values, or even their rise and fall. All we have to go on are tombs found in the Russian wasteland. The tombs are always packed to the brim with treasures, and often weapons too. Plus, many tombs contain the bodies of female warriors. This has led archaeologists to believe that the Scythians were rich, they were nomadic and had no cities, and both men and women were fierce warriors. Number 1. Ancient Beer Bong In 1897, archaeologist Nikolai Veselovsky discovered a strange pair of objects while excavating a burial mound in the northwestern Caucasus. The mound dated back about 5,500 years. The strange objects appeared to be tubes made from gold and silver, and decorated with bulls and other powerful animals. Nikolai believed these artifacts were parts of ancient scepters, something that designated a high social status. 100 years later, archaeologists proved Nikolai wrong. Instead, these tubes have turned out to be ancient beer bongs. That's right! To reach this conclusion, archaeologists with the Russian Academy of Sciences had to revisit the burial mound and do more research. The mound was divided into three main compartments. Each compartment contained the body of an adult tucked in the fetal position. In the center of the chamber was an area that appeared to have been used for some kind of ritualistic ceremony. Moving back to the tubes, researchers took a look inside and found barley starch residue. Clearly, these were actual metal tubes used for drinking beer, not part of ancient scepters. Putting all the pieces together now, Researchers figured out there was some kind of beer drinking ceremony going on in the chamber. These tubes were used similar to modern beer bongs as a way to drink booze as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching! Let me know your thoughts on these incredible discoveries! 
Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!